is a very quick response video to uh, this video by Jeremy Corbell, who is interviewing John Erhardt, an optical ele an electro optical specialist who works at Boeing and he designs and uh, builds test equipment for the Atflare system, which was made by Raytheon. And uh, Jeremy interviews him and asks him some questions and then uh, comes away thinking that he's debunked the rotating glare hypothesis of the gimbal. But uh, as we shall see, I don't think that is correct. And I'm very quickly going to go through the video. Now, the first five minutes are just you know, Jeremy saying, like, debunkers are terrible and don't listen to them, things like that. Then there's a couple of minutes of uh, John explaining what he does and his, uh, his qualifications and his experience, things like that, which is all fine. I have no problem with him. He's obviously has some experience uh, with the Apple system and he understands the components. He even describes some of them by, by name, like D-Row for derotation. So he's obviously familiar with the fact that they're there. Uh, so skip forward to 728, uh, which is where the actual question is asked. Yeah, let's see about there. So let's see like it rotates counterclockwise in the frame does the FLIR gimbal ufo does it display an actual rotation of the object itself or is that an optical illusion caused by the derotation mechanism within the at FLIR pod all right so first of all this is jeremy asking kind of the wrong question it says it says is it caused by the d-row mechanism and just the d-row the derotation mechanism by itself obviously isn't going to do that all a derotation mechanism does is rotate something there has to be something that makes the glare actually rotate separate from the horizon so the derotation mechanism if all we're talking about is the derotation mechanism rotating things it rotates the entire scene so everything in that scene will rotate the same question is how do you get something that uh, rotates the glare relative to the horizon so he's kind of asking the wrong question and i think it kind of leads john down the wrong path in giving giving his answers so let's see what he says the way the d-row works it's going to spin the entire scene what it's doing is it's spinning the scene so it doesn't look like it's it's spinning it's actually counteracting the effect of when the gimbal's tracking it yeah, that is that's perfectly correct. The reason for the derotation mechanism is that the camera itself has to rotate because of the way it's gimbal mounted for various reasons. And that rotation would make the horizon look like it's at weird angles. And so they have this derotation mechanism that puts the horizon back where it should be. So it actually doesn't look like anything is rotating. It actually looks like the horizon is steady. Um, this comes into play when the camera is tracking from left to right because if it's over here, it has to be at a certain angle and it's over here, it actually has to kind of rotate all the way around and I have videos explaining this. Uh, so that was correct. The thing is rotating. So when you look at that video, the target is rotating more than the scene is. At the right, so he's saying the target is rotating more than the scene is and this is kind of like, I think, a bit of the misunderstanding he's thinking that there's a target and then there's the scene and these are two separate things. He's always kind of, he's already starting out thinking that this target is an actual solid object. And so he kind of goes along with that and that leads him to the very end of that video, you can see a little bit of the whole scene rotate, but the target just keeps rotating. So there's nothing in the system that's going to rotate the target more than the background. This doesn't work out. Right. That's perfectly true. You know, if you've got like you've got a background like my bookcase is back here and you've got a, a target like this little thing here and you rotate the entire camera, then they're both going to rotate together. Obviously, that's perfectly true. Uh, but that's kind of assuming that what you see as a target is actually a solid object. If it's something else like, like, like a glare, then uh, it's a bit different. So we'll get into that in a second. You don't have to get into any arguments about whether or not it's an artifact of target itself causing some glares or something. Well, actually you do, you do kind of have to get into arguments about that because if it's a glare, then the rotation uh, could be, the, the, the orientation of the glare could be affected by components of the camera. If for example, you take like a camera like, like this one here, this is a uh, Canon 7D and it's got like a this little 50 millimeter lens in and it's got this, uh, uh, kind of hexagonal, I think, octag octagonal aperture in it. And the glare that you see around lights from that uh, will have these little spikes on. 
in certain directions, like up, up, down, left, right, and up 45 degrees, blah, blah, blah. And if you were to rotate the lens, if you actually like press this button here and rotate the entire lens assembly, it actually rotates the glare. The glare itself rotates. So if there's something in the camera system ahead of uh, the derotation mechanism that is rotating uh, around and causes the glare itself to rotate relative to the horizon, and this is the key point, the glare rotates relative to the horizon because we're rotating the camera or part of the camera, and then we do the derotation, then puts the horizon back where it is, but since the glare has rotated relative to the horizon, the glare appears to rotate independently of the horizon. It's complicated, and I know a lot of people uh, have trouble with it, and I have trouble explaining it to people, and it's perfectly understandable. People people miss this. Uh, but anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here. Let's see what uh, John has to say. The derotation device inside AT Flare is not going to rotate the target, not the background. We're seeing the yeah. See again, there he's just uh, he's assuming that the target is like a solid object that's part of the scene rather than an artifact within the camera itself. Uh, I mean, it is it is actually a solid object, it's a jet engine, but that creates this glare artifact, uh, which is kind of affected by the camera. So if something is rotating in the camera, then that glare will rotate relative to the horizon. Or actually, really, it's more like the horizon rotates relative to the glare, and then it rotates the horizon back to where it should be by rotating the entire scene, which rotates the glare, and the horizon looks like it hasn't moved, and the glare looks like it has moved. Complicated, I know. The gimbal craft itself rotate. We're not seeing a glare or flare effect from this magical derotation device. That is correct. Wow. Yeah, that's right. It's rotating. Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's like. See, that's the conclusion you would reach if you don't think about what is making the shape of the glare rotate. What work? Why does a glare have a particular shape? Now, if a glare has some kind of diamond shape, it could well be because of a diamond shaped aperture, or it could be because of the sequence of, of mirrors it goes through. He talks a bit about steering mirrors earlier. Uh, it could be something to do with the window that's in front of the the camera. It could be that there's uh, very 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 fine abrasions on the window that make the glare longer in one direction than the other. Uh, yeah, you have seen uh, all these things happen with different cameras. I've seen uh, smudges on on the the window like do um, make the glare go in a certain direction. I've seen what appears to be something to do with the aperture that makes it uh, uh, like be oriented in a certain direction. So these things do happen. You do you do get shaped glares. Glares are not just uniformly uh, like round blobs. They quite often they have spikes like up, down, left, right, just like the gimbal has. If you look at it closely, it has these axial spikes that go like that way and then a longer one that way along the long axis of the saucer. Um, and so if the thing that is causing that shape, the thing that causes these spikes is rotated in front of the derotation mechanism, uh, then the glare is going to rotate relative to the horizon. Or, like I said before, the glare is not rotating, but the horizon is rotating. All right, let's see what else we have. It's so simple. People are trying to confuse the issue. Yeah. I'm not trying to confuse the issue, but unfortunately it is confusing. So you can't just simply say, oh yes, the derotation mechanism rotates the entire scene, therefore uh, the object could not rotate independently of the horizon. Yeah, this is, I did a whole video on this. It's uh, this gimbal UFO, why does the gimbal rotate, uh, where does the glare rotate when the horizon does not? You know, I can uh, append this to this video, but you know, I tried to explain it there, but like I say, it's, it's understandably difficult to grasp and I think John is perfectly capable of grasping it. Obviously, he's a technician who understands these things. But I think the way Jeremy has explained it to him uh, has kind of left him with like a, a simple understanding of what the issue is. And so it's really, really Jeremy's fault here. I think, unfortunately, not really communicating the actual explanation to John. But let's see. What else do we have? Those arguments don't matter. 
This is a mid-wave infrared camera, right? So it's looking at between like three and five microns. That's the wavelength of the radiation. That's 3,000 to 5,000 nanometers. You're looking at the background and the same wavelength that you're looking at the target. That's what's important. The whole scene. You're seeing... I'm not sure that's really important. I mean, it's just saying that it's just a single picture. It's a single image and it's just light coming in. It's like saying, you know, oh, this... This hand here is uh, getting light at the same wavelength as the bookcase back there, so they're part of the same scene. I mean, yeah, that's true, but it's not really that relevant. It's just kind of a, a more technical way of saying it's just a single image. So, really that relevant. the same wavelengths of energy from the background as you are from the target. Okay, it's just a different amount, different amount of flux, how many photons per second are coming in. That's all that's mm, different between the target yeah, and the background. Yeah, brightness, so, different brightness. Regardless of if it's reflective or refractive, it's going to change the background and the target the same. So you just think of a mirror yeah. of a flat so surface. It's like just going on about most likely it's essentially the same thing, how a derotation mechanism rotates an entire image, which is understood. And we're not saying the derotation mechanism causes the object to rotate independently of the background. It's already rotated independently of the background or, as I keep saying, the background has rotated and the glare hasn't rotated, so you have to rotate the background back, and that rotates the glare. An all-reflective design, because that's way, way cheaper. Yeah, we're but talking about mirrors. this argument doesn't hinge on whether or not the D-Row is all-reflective or refractive. Nope, not at all. It could be it's all software-based. It's attempting to to argue something that's irrelevant to the case. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because he says it's a straw man argument, which is uh, exactly what we've got here. Like Jeremy is presenting this straw man argument, is the derotation mechanism causing this to rotate independently of that? But uh, that's not the actual argument. It's like a, a easy to rebut argument that you put up, which is like what a straw man argument is. It's a, something that seems uh, like, you know, seems is easier to attack. I'm not sure if that's a straw man argument, but not the normally anyway. But let's carry on. Because the object would never move independently of the horizon based on this. If it was an object, no, it wouldn't. If it was an actual flying saucer, then rotating the camera isn't going to do anything. But if it's a glare, with the shape of that glare is affected by components of the camera that are in front of the derotation mechanism, then yes. It will actually rotate. It will appear to rotate. This system. Yes. That object is turning. Yeah. Nothing inside the AT FLIR system is or could cause the rotational flux of the target that is a higher rate than the background. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But again, he is like just basically saying, stating the obvious here that if there's a picture and it's got something in the foreground and something in the background and you rotate uh, the image, they're both going to rotate the same. That's not what the argument is. There's no way the optics are, are causing that rotation. I love it how you cut to the chase like a fucking samurai. It's a completely mute point. Case closed, fucking bang. People will find crafty ways to pull the wool over people's eyes. Trust me that. Do you find it interesting that it... And Jeremy's saying that people will find crafty ways to pull the wool over people's eyes. How could, how could I pull the wool over people's eyes? Do you think I'm pulling the wool over your eyes by giving you this, this explanation? Do you think I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm just an idiot because I don't understand what uh, John is talking about here? I mean, I think, you know, basically... I don't think anything's really changed here. John uh, basically did the why does the horizon not rotate when the object does rotate argument, which I explained in my video. And uh, nothing really changed. I mean, it's just it's just the same argument. And now Jeremy has got another expert who agrees with him, another expert who is wrong. I think this expert, if I was to talk to him, I'd be happy to do so. Uh, perhaps even just watching this video might do it. He might understand the actual argument because uh, he seems like he's a pretty smart guy. So let's see. Uh, finish up here. It, it is of such a mechanical nature. I mean, they said it's, it's. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's what really jumps out at you. It's rotating. <laughs> yeah, this is funny. You smell it. Hey, one son. Nothing else in the world smells like that. So I think Jeremy is just saying that uh, this is him here and he loves the smell of 
messing up debunkers in the morning. Yeah, beware. Well, any thoughts? Yes, yes, I do have some thoughts, and this, these are they. So, uh, I think I'll just play my, I'll just attach this gimbal UFO video, and you should watch this. Uh, and this actually might help if you didn't follow what was happening before. Perhaps this might help explain what the actual theory is. Um, and uh, I'd like to talk to anybody who disagrees with me so I can explain it or have it explained to me. So that would be great. See ya. So something I'm asked a lot regarding the gimbal video is if it's just a glare, if it's just uh, some kind of glare in the camera, then how can the glare rotate when the horizon doesn't rotate? How can the glare rotate independently of the horizon? Now, it's actually uh, not that complicated. Now, the way the camera is mounted, it has to rotate uh, when it goes over zero degrees, when it's going over the forward facing direction, just because of the way it's mounted, because of the gimbal system. This is an unwanted rotation. So what they do is they have a thing called a derotation mechanism that levels out the rotation to make it so that the horizon is the way it should be, which is leveled to the actual horizon as seen by the pilot. So this derotation mechanism is applied after the actual rotation of the camera to remove the unwanted rotation. So let's see what that looks like. If we have this little camera here and we rotate it and say that's an unwanted rotation and we want to remove this unwanted rotation, we just apply a derotation to it. In this case, I just used uh, a motion tracker to remove, to track the motion and remove the rotation. So we've derotated it here which gives the horizon, my garage door here, uh, remains steady and the glare itself rotates because the glare is a function of a part of the camera. And if we are rotating the camera, uh, the glare rotates relative to the horizon. And so if we then apply this derotation to get the horizon steady, the horizon doesn't rotate and the glare does rotate. So that explains what's going on in the gimbal UFO video. The glare is rotating because the camera is rotating. The horizon isn't rotating because they don't want it to rotate. The rotation is unwanted, a function of the gimbal system. The derotation rotates the glare, and that's what we're seeing here. You can try this yourself.